Hi guys, so today I have this um, set to share with you. It is Spellbinder's new APG kit for March of 2022. So they did send this free of charge from my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you were to purchase items to those links. So thank you for you guys for using those if possible. If you're already a club member and you just want to switch it up, you can always make changes in your uh, club account portal. Um, generally, if you're trying to like change out to like a value club, you want to cancel whatever it was that you had previously, right? It depends on what's in the, the, the value club, what it is that you want to keep. So just pay attention to that kind of thing. Um, but other than that, it's very easy, you know, to change things up to, they don't do skips anymore. What you do is just cancel whatever it is that you have there, cancel it, and then add on what you do want, or, you know, wait till the next month or however you want to work that. But once you're a club member, you get 10% off the site, and that is already reflected in the prices that you see on the site once uh, you're logged in, you know? So uh, I just want to mention that because uh, sometimes I forget to mention it, sometimes I do, and, you know, just want to keep you guys posted there. And as far as becoming a club member, uh, again, you can sign up all the way through basically the last week of the month. Um, like this month for March, this is what you will get if you sign up now in March. And if you are a club member, you will be charged on March 5th or the 5th usually of the month, and then it ships out shortly thereafter. But... Um, I think this is going to be my Freeform Friday, which I'm not going to put that on the outside because um, the title, because usually the title is long enough as it is. But so looking at this uh, our, um, beautiful ovalette set here. Sorry. Uh, um, so yeah, this is the Bella ovalette set that we were going to be working with today. So I think what I'm going to do is a shape card that is a shaker card. I think that'll be fun. Because looking at it, and when I did the unboxing, there's this outer die. And this guy cuts its own frame, okay? So it's doesn't need to be paired with this one like it's not an inlay it does its own thing you can use this with this to make a frame you know cuts that center part out or you leave it like this or you know whatever it is that you want to do um, but I think this is what we're gonna do possibly so let me check that out in just a minute but either way we have that one and then we have this outer die that then this is an inlay for if you want to pop that in there and then we have this other piece that also <laughs> cuts out this area if you wanted to or you cut this out from another piece of paper and layer it on top right and then we have this other die that goes <laughs> within that one it's like an echo of what's going on here that does also have an inlay for it and that even has a little oval in the center if you want to cut that out or um, just you know mat it with something else or just whatever it is that you want to do with that one and then we also have some cinch and go flowers here so uh, a couple of them one more posy like one more daisy like over here and when the cinch and goes what it does it cuts a little tiny hole in the center and it's a tiny little hole and you can pop in some flower centers or just glue it and then if you put like a rhinestone or a little gem on top you're not going to see the little hole or just leave the little hole and then we have some leaves so let me um, gather some papers and gather my thoughts and we will get to okay. it so I'm going to put this to the side right now I don't need these smaller ones I think I'm going to keep this and then we need this so, um, you know, I did measure these, I think, in the unboxing. This is perfectly almost um, basically five by seven, like this. It's seven inches from like that tip to tip there, and then five inches across. So you can put it on top of a regular five by seven card. You're going to have the corners of the card, of course, sticking out, but it's right to the edges. Um, so I have here some really sturdy cardstock, and I think what I'm going to do is make a card base. Uh, and it's going to open this way. If you have larger paper and you want to your card to open at the top or however you want, I'm going to make a shaped card. So this is going to be a shaped card base. And what I'm going to do is fold my paper, score it at five and a half, I suppose, because this is eight and a half by 11 standard A2 size paper. Score it at five and a half. And I'm just going to leave that outer die edge just hanging off the edge. This doesn't really matter. I mean, well, this is really thick paper, so I want to make sure to have a score line, but all you're going to do is fold the paper in half. And even if it's not perfect, you're going to cut this off anyway. And, you know, you're going to decide where do you want to hinge it. Like, how far over do you want this to hang out? So I kind of, I like mine to be really a lot of the shape, because this is going to stick out still. So, you know, I might bring it, like, even this close to the edge. And that just leaves a little bit where it's still connected. Actually, a little more than that, even. <laughs> Maybe that much. That way it's not super noticeable that, you know, it's not completely card there. Let me bring that up again. I'm going to tape this down, and then I'm going to take another look and make sure it's where I want it to be. Because I really want it 
You need it to hinge, but see, I just left a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and run this through my die cutting machine and I'll be right back. Hey okay, guys, so this is some really thick paper I used here, so wow. <laughs> it's popping out like paper doll, it's funny. Okay, let me get this off of here and release this other side very carefully. And we will see our little card base. So that is a shaped card base. Again, right on the edge, and the reason we're doing that is because you want to leave some so that you hinge it, right? So it doesn't just completely cut it in half uh, or two pieces. All right, so there's that. Um, and then all I'm going to do with this other one here is take the little bit darker color. I'm going to trim this down. Now I'm going to leave this kind of free floating, right? This is what's going to make our shaker area for us. So. You know, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to cut it out twice, if you have a very thin paper, this paper is really, really sturdy. But if you want, you can do it twice and then layer those up together so that you have an even sturdier area because this is all kind of frilly and lacy and we're going to pop it up away from the card. So um, I'm eyeballing this. This is where I'm going to put the foam tape for the shaker. So that's what that, that shape is there, that area. Let me put this down. That looks really great. Maybe this can go up a little more there this middle section is going to cut away so what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a lot of tape there and then and so I'm running both dies at the same time or three dies we want to make sure we're taping everything down so I'm going to tape everything real well and just run this through and I will be right back okay. oh yeah and so I'm going to do is just pop this out very carefully and clean it out, all the little pieces that need to fall out and everything. And I will be right back. You can see all these little pieces. We're going to clean them out. <laughs> I'll be right back. Hey okay, guys, I cleaned that out and got all my little bits here. Um, so basically it's going to be like this. And then this part here is going to have shaker to it. So um, you can also use the next die, this one, to actually cut your acetate for the shaker because it's going to cut an area that's a little bit wider than this part right but um, if you you know have a machine that doesn't really want to take acetate to get cut the sizing on that would be I know not every machine will cut acetate very well uh, let's see about three inches right from here to here maybe a little shy of three inches so it's not sticking out too much by four and a quarter three inches by four and a quarter piece of acetate and I'll be right back okay, so we have our piece here and I'm just gonna put some glue on the back of this guy just all down right here, down this edge, and all in here, wherever you think you would like to actually just touch the acetate. So pretty much all these areas. And right around here. And I'll take this little piece of acetate and just pop it on the back. And wait for that to set up just a little bit. And I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our card base, and we have this with our little acetate on there. I'm going to line this in uh, foam in just a minute. I'm also going to do a couple other um, cuts here. So I'm going to take this part. You can leave it just open like this so you see more of the shaker. But this I'm going to use the inlay so um, it's going to be very soft and lacy. So I'm going to take this and cut it from some gold paper. And then I'm also going to cut it from the same... Uh, pink from my background card so it's like a, a little bit lighter than the one we used on the topper and I'm just going to tape those together of course and then just run them through the pink paper also so I'm gonna run it through this gold and usually when I tape them together I try to keep them together so that it's exactly the same when I cut it from this one so after I remove it here I'll keep them together and put it on this one and then I'm just going to stamp the words um, thinking of you from this set from uh, Susan Tierney Coburn's uh, new dies. Uh, these are the stamps that go along with that. And I'm just going to stamp this thinking of you and I'm going to cut it out uh, from some white paper and then just cut it out with this little the die from the very center. Okay, okay and I'll so be right. I have some other pieces here. Uh, thinking of you, really nice. And what I was going to do with this guy is have this here. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in here. I might 
put some dimensionals on that one. We'll see. With this one, I'm just going to cut it straight down. If you want to use your guillotine board, I'm going to do is eyeball right down the center. And so I'm going to do a drop shadow with this, but um, I'm going to split it. So I'll make it so that this little area is kind of chubby so if I go like this it's not gonna be super noticeable that that piece is missing right that very center but we get that gold drop shadow on this side and then we'll get it on this other side too and you don't have to split it if you're afraid to do that or you don't want to try that out you can just you know keep it together and drop shadow at one direction or the other but just that slight difference just cutting it there will help out so I'm gonna just put this on the edge here of this one and then I'll do the same thing with the other piece. And again, I'm just kind of shadowing it to the left, bringing that gold out this way, and then the other one I'll shadow it pushed out to the right a little bit. So that will be that. And I'll be right back. I'll do the same thing on this side, put the glue and then shadow it so it's to the right. Okay, so we have that put together ready to go we have our sentiment we have this guy and this so I'm gonna do is just turn this over and line it out with some um, Sorry, I just had to grab a new roll of this so I'm gonna line it out with this foam adhesive and I think it fits in there perfectly I know it's a little bit smaller in this area so I might trim it down just a little bit if I need to in those areas um, but we'll see so for now like this piece here I'm going to put that down and see if I can see on the other side. And if I can, then I'll know I need to trim it a little bit. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so whenever I line out something that's square like this, I definitely cut it off at the edge. And just make sure whenever you start the next piece that you butt it up against the piece you just ended so that your, se your um, sequins or if you're using a finer glitter, you definitely want to <laughs> butt it up. Obviously, sequins or something a little bit larger is going to not just fall out very easily, but... Either way, I'm going to go around and just make sure I'm carefully lining this, and I'll be back. We have all those pieces. Oh, I thought I took the carriers off of this, but I did not. <laughs> so just frame it out. Again, budding up everything real well. And then this is my card base, and it is going to open this way because my sentiment is oriented that way. So with this, I'm just going to put some of this little pink sequins that I have. And again, not too, too much. You want it to shake, but, you know... And I'm just going to do a little decorating since it is a thinking of you type card. It's going to be a little more subtle. I have these little gold ones. Bring some of that gold back in. And I think that's all I'm going to use. And I just kind of flatten them out so that they're not just completely stacked up on top of each other. So when you bring this in, let me make sure I don't have any dust on this. Okay, the dust is on the outside. And I'm just going to bring this in here. And I know with the static electricity, the cling that I want to stick before, you just kind of jump up. I'm just eyeballing everything. I'm going to bring this closer to myself so I can just really make sure we're lined up really well before I stick anything down too well. That looks pretty good. I'm going to push that down just a little bit. And then I always give it a quick flip <laughs> and push down from the back. I don't know, that's just what I like to do because I feel like I can really push down over here instead of damaging the front or beautiful topper on any card that I make that way. And there it is. So pretty. Love the way that tone on tone and it's just the slightest difference of colors. It just looks so pretty. Okay, so we have this guy. Now again, you can leave it like this. Maybe you put a sentiment in here or just die cut words or do it this way, you know, however you want. I mean, this can even go in this direction. Actually, hmm. Now I wasn't planning on that, but that looks very pretty because <laughs> you can put it here. And then we have this guy. Um, let me put this guy on here with a dimensional adhesive right quick, and then we'll see if we want to, which way we want to orient this. I really like both ways. Hmm. Let me get this in front of me so I can really pop that on there. All right, sorry guys. So again, really dimensional adhesive on that one. <clears throat> now we can just glue that down. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I don't know. <laughs> I like it in both directions. 
Huh. You know what? Let's go this way. Why not? Change it up a little bit. Okay. So, I can see that this is just paper. It's flat, all right? The acetate's a little bit lower than, like, the very frame of this. So if you want to put glue, I can put it on the very edges here. I can put some in the center. Um, <clears throat> it is raised up a little bit from the center, but not enough so that I don't think it's going to not stick. You know what I'm saying? It's just paper to acetate. So the center there and the center here. And what I'm just going to do is eyeball this. And then I'm going to heat up my glue gun because I'm just going to make a really sweet and kind of soft um, bow to hang off the side here. So I'm going to use a hot glue gun to glue that down. So I will While be right heating up. I'm going to put this aside. I mean, this looks gorgeous just like that. Look at that. All that scroll work. And of course, you got it done by just whoop, cranking it through super easy. Looks so pretty. Okay, and then, you know, if you wanted, I keep coming back, if you, you know, want to put this on a 5x7 card base, you can just put that card front on a 5x7 card base, and then your card would just have the edges all around. Really pretty. Okay, so for this, I just have some seam binding, and I want to make it, again, real loopy. I think I did this recently. So I'm going to open up my fingers, like, really wide. And this time, I think what I'm going to do is just wrap around and around like this. And when I get to here, I think... I'll do is that. And then um, let's just pretend this is, I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. So I went around and around and I'm crossing over the front. I'm going to take one of these guys like this one and put it through and over everything. Okay. And then we're just going to take these guys and knot it. So I'm doing this with one hand instead of like using a little tool. So this might be a little different. So I'm going to put it through there. And again, trying to keep these about level. I might have to redo it if I want longer tails. There we go. Bringing a little bit more of that in. Okay, I just did one knot. And I'm going to... Yeah, you can leave it like that. I mean, you don't have to tie a knot knot, but... I think if you want to stay, you probably want to tie another actual knot. So I'm just going to put that back through again. And make an actual knot. Now we have this kind of big, froofy bow, and I'm just going to open it up, <laughs> if I can get my fingers in there, there we go. And just pull these guys out, the loops, you know. Okay, I'm going to wait for my glue gun to heat up, and I'm probably going to cut off the frayed edges, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I'm going to put it somewhere like right in here. So I'm just going to get this glue. I have two hot glue guns in front of me always. And I plugged one of them in and I thought it was the other one. But it was this one. So this one, thank goodness it wasn't touching anything. It was just sitting there. But I was like, hey, this isn't warm yet. Oh, yeah. I plugged in the... I have the wrong one in front of me. Okay. And again, I want these guys to come this way. So I made my bow really big. And, like, I wanted to take up space here but whatever it is that you want to do with yours will be great and there's my card guys so thanks for watching thank you so much spellbinders for sending these items for review this I makes mean, this such makes... a gorgeous card you guys so fast oh my gosh anyhow i'll have some images for you i have the links in the description box again this is the march 2022 uh, apg die of the month and keep an eye out. I'll continue working with the uh, total package items. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.